I can't hear you. There you go. I turned it off. Here we go. That's what's up. How you doing, Cat? Man, I'm doing good. Hey, I like that intro though. I like that 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 the, the music that come in. I felt like we was on the grand stage right there. And you know, I'm trying to improve, man. You know, add 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 add, add some um some enthusiasm, draw people in a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can dig it, man. You drew me right on in. I'm over here cheesing like a little schoolhouse kid. <laughs> That's you, <laughs> old cat. <laughs> so what's up, man? I don't know, man. Everything good, man. You know what? Let me be honest. You know, speak life into existence. So everything been excellent, you know. Um, been fighting through some things, but been getting through it. So I'm, 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 I'm really happy where I'm at right now, extremely. Okay. On his growth, you know what I mean. So, how about you though? Man. How about you, man? Wait, what you trying? You trying to pluck at me already? <laughs> you know what's up, man? You been holding it in. I don't know if he was holding it for right now, but uh, yeah, what's up, man? Talk to me. Uh, uh man, things are, are are better. You know, let's be, let I be one hundred. You know, when we last spoke these past couple weeks, uh, where where I was sitting, <clears throat> um and how I was feeling, right? You know, um, feeling like I couldn't sleep, um, mm. feel like things wasn't what wasn't moving or uh, fast enough, um, feel like I wasn't adding value, um, all kind of things, man. I just had all kind of uh, just mental, I don't wanna say breakdowns, but uh, uh, stresses, mental stresses that, uh, that really challenged your boy, man. That really challenged your boy. Um, challenged me um, to a place and point that uh, I really had to, <clears throat> I had to awaken, uh, awaken to to the to this notion that hey, um, I can, I will, you know, and, and develop and, and move from that. I, truth be told, I got to be honest. It, it's been good to be able to speak with you. Uh, these past uh, those during that during that time because you really offered some great insight. Um, you helped me uh, uh, put put some thing put some things together. Um, help me overcome some things and see, and see see it and see 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 how to approach uh, this particular situation a little bit different. And through that, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate you, you know, let's just, like you say, you like to keep it transparent, so let's just keep it 100. You know, uh, I think the re one of the key factors in, you know, in that situation, right, was you reaching out, man, you know what I mean? And, and, and in order for me to even put my two cents in, you one, you, you know, you had enough um, belief in me or, you know, that I could at least give some kind of value to whatever. And I'm just glad I was able to um, return the favor because you did it a lot for me. You know what I mean? So I'm just glad that, you know, whatever it was, whatever got you, whatever, you know, got you up out of there from your own perspective or whatever the case may be that you, you know, you was able to navigate through that because when there's not somebody we can lean on, it gets, a, it becomes lonely. And sometimes when it gets too lonely, you fall off the road. And when you fall off the road, you might lay on the, on the side of the road and you might not never get back up and you turn right back home. You know what I mean? And don't continue on the mission. Yeah. I, I mean, I've had that happen uh, plenty of times in my life. So I, I'm, I'm talking about experience, you know? So I'm just glad everything worked out, bro. No, that, no that, it, it did. Uh, you, you really helped me out. Truth is, uh, you, 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 have, you, you shed some light on some things, man. You know, uh, as you know, I, w I was battling with restless nights um, things, something has shifted, you know, something within my, my, my mental process has shifted, um, and, and do everything off whack, man, to place in point that, uh, I was staying up later, um, tr trying to, trying to figure out how to get things done, but not really getting anything accomplished, mm -hmm. you know, um, causing me to sleep in late, uh, or oversleep, um, uh, and still feel like I can't get anything accomplished. Um, and uh, you you mentioned to this to me was that uh, um, 
God, so long. Get my, I thought I wrote it down. I thought I wrote it down. Uh, anxiety, you, that's what you mentioned to me. You, 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 said, you, you said this thing about mental health and having anxiety. And when you mentioned that to me, brother, um, I got to be honest, I immediately said, hold on, not me, you know, and, and begin to do the research and realize for myself that uh, what I was experiencing was just that some some anxiety had be, had creeped into into the mental process um, um, and uh, kind of derailed me, took took me off course, uh, gave me some, things became a little bit unstable as far as uh, as far as doing doing what I knew to do to to stay focused um, to follow through on on objectives and and, and goal planning um, and, and not only that but to the place and point where um, I was even uh, I was beaten I don't want to say I was beating myself up mentally but I started to I didn't believe I didn't mm -hmm. hold tight to to, to the belief system that I, I can do this. Um, I, 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 I it was all this self-doubt was creeping in. Um, you know, I've been doing, it, been doing this thing for some years now, as you know, right? And so uh, when things don't seem to look the way you think they should look, um, you begin to start saying, man, what, wh where am I at on this thing? And that's, these were the things I, were, I, I was battling with um, and where this anxiety creeped in and really shifted my paradigm. I mean, we, we all know that paradigm is how we think. Um, and, and, and our thinking really uh, uh, directs us, moves us, motivates us, inspires us, gives us direction for, uh, for the things in life that we want to accomplish, for the things that we want to do or see ourselves doing for that, for that sake, right? So uh, them, these past, it's almost, it was almost three weeks that I've been battling, I've been battling, battling with this anxiety issue really derailed me. Um, and when you mentioned it to me, uh, what, a few days ago was when I really began to say, hold on, I recognize this, okay. And, and I began to look a little deeper um, and, and get a better understanding for, uh, uh, an understanding for what this this thing called anxiety really is, and I, I know you you uh, you favor uh, mental health. So um, share with us with some thoughts, man. Well, first off, um, glad you was able to get through it. You know, diving deeper, I've realized in any subject, in anything that's going on, gives some kind of clarity. And I, you know what I mean. We're able to put a little bit on it, but um. Yeah, anxiety, man, I, to me, right, what I've realized is, what I'm understanding is, it's, um, it's worrying about the future, right? It's worrying about something that you have no control over, right? And um, I didn't realize, one, that fell into the mental health category. Let, to be transparent, like you always say, right, let's keep it 100, right? Let's just call a ball a ball and a strike a strike. I, when I heard mental health, I thought, uh, what's the political correct term? Because I don't want to say I don't want to offend nobody, but like um, remedial, right? I'm thinking like remedial. I'm thinking, uh, what is my um, uh, you know, something of the lines of like that, right? Like, uh, 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 what is it? Autistic, autistic, yeah. things of that nature, right? And so I never understood mental health had so many different elements. Right. And it wasn't until I was going into um, and studying my own anxiety. Right. That I realized this fell up under that. And um, once I realized, right, I, I would get this feeling. Right. So I think I've told this story before, but every Tuesday, right, during the Game Changers program, we'd have to get on the rep call. The rep call starts at on, on the West. I think it was it was 5 p.m. over here. Right. And at for about 355, this heavy pressure. I mean, it's so heavy, it felt like it was closing on my chest, right? I'm doing like this and I can't breathe. And I'm sitting here and it, listen, B, I done been through a lot in my life. We all know the story, right? Gang banged and all, went to prison, facing a life in prison. I ain't never felt like that, right? I've never had no anxiety. I was used to it, right? I had normalized that. But this new it thing 
was raising this like something that never that I've never felt before. And, it, and I realized like, you know, peeling back the layers of the onion, right? It was because I was worrying about what others was gonna think about me. I was worrying if I was gonna feel, um, if I was gonna do a good job. I continue to try to predict the outcome instead of focusing on the present and being grateful for the moment and being humble enough to understand that everything is gonna be okay, right? And it wasn't until I recently understood that it's not just sometimes a thought process, things that can trigger anxiety while learning through um, cognitive behavior therapy, right? Reading these books is that it's also a situation that can trigger that, right? So the situation, right? The trigger, okay, four o'clock rep call, right? The time, the time was my trigger. So it would trigger this feeling. And then the thought will become, oh, I'm, I'm having an anxiety attack. I'm having a panic. What's going on with me, right? So I had to, you know, separate the two and then start to dive a little deeper. And, and I heard about box breathing or some type of breathing, right? When you take two deep pumps, like, right? And then try to, you know, take a, something that you're doing, your breath will chop everything up and you'll be able to get a little bit of clarity in that moment. And so, um, for me, though, that, what, that has helped a lot is just being grateful. Anytime I start to feel that pressure to rise, I start to feel my breath being taken from me. I start to feel, right, like my mind is going all over the place and self-doubt, the bully of self-doubt is beating me in the side of my head with the billy club. When that guy comes and I, and I get, because it seems like it comes out of nowhere, right? And he hits you so hard, you fall down and you're like, what's going on? And then they start to stomp you out. His homeboy, Mr. Fear comes along. You got Mr. Self-Doubt. And here goes the bullies beat you up and you don't know what to do, right? And it wasn't until I, I, told, I took a deep breath and I said, you know what? I'm just going to be grateful for right now. And I started to be thankful for everything I had and stop worrying about what was going on. I mean, it didn't even have to do with the rip call. I'm thinking my, I'm thinking my daughter's love. I'm thinking my wife's love. I'm thinking the food in my belly. I'm doing all that. And that becoming present and being humble in the moment was able for me to ease that, that, that anxiety feeling that pressure. No, that, that, that's good because, you know, uh, and, and you, you said something, uh, triggers. Um, that's exactly what I was experiencing, man. I was experiencing some things. And what, what happened was um, I, I saw an incident on the news where uh, the cops handcuffed this young lady. They really hauled tired, hot tired her behind her backs, cuffed her feet to, to, the bra to the bracelets and just tossed in the back seat. And uh, she fell over. And I just, I, I thought, I personally thought that uh, she, she had, she was, she probably, when they were showing this on the news that, that she possibly had passed away mm. and uh, it triggered for me, my past experience, um, being locked up, being in police cars, being in, in, in uh, uh, at the police station in the, the, the small cell, um, being, being in the county lockup, it triggered, it triggered that for me. And it shifted everything that I be, I knew or believed for myself, um, because now I'm I'm saying to myself, man, um, I need I need to get at this to this point in life. I need to get at this level at life. Um, and if I'm if I if I die before that, then I fail because uh, from from the trigger from what I seen on TV just triggered all these emotions, man. Triggered all these emotions. And it literally derailed every aspect, everything for me. Brother, when I tell you I couldn't sleep, I could not, I, ain't slept, I hadn't slept in three weeks. Mm -hmm. I hadn't slept in three weeks. I literally was sp uh, spending my nights on the side of the bed, sitting up, panting, taking the deep breaths, the, practicing the, 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 the breathing control. Um, uh, I was walking around the house <laughs> par like, like paranoid. <laughs> looking out the window, checking the door, you, mm. you know, um, and literally if I did fall asleep, I would jump back up immediately. I was not comfortable. And, and, and for me, I like to say this was some, some mild, this was, was a mild episode that I experienced, right? But it wasn't until you had mentioned it that I began to realize, um, I, don't, I don't know what anxiety is either. I didn't realize uh, uh, 
that it was part of the, this mental health issue, you know, um, from my past experience being in the military, um, I, I suffered from PS, P, PTSD, um, you know, and so I'm um, doing some research and really understanding um, this anxiety thing, man, it really took, it took me by surprise and I was able to, to regroup um, while the breathing work, uh, being able to talk with you work, uh, being able to, to talk with my wife work, uh, and, 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 sh and share with others what I was, uh, feeling and what I was, uh, experiencing. Um, but when I tell you, uh, <laughs> Jonas, I, I literally, you, you said, you talk about how four o'clock came and you had this pressure on you, brother, every night, uh, <laughs> By, by the, bet, between eight and 11 o'clock, your boy had so much tension, you know, the, the evening is winding down, the kids about to go to bed, wifey about to go to bed, and now I'm about to be up. It's just me and the Rover. And, and he ain't but this big, so he ain't, he ain't gonna do nothing for me, you know? Um, and um, uh, this, this fear, this, this feeling of being up, uh, of, uh, no, no security. I, I, that's like I, it just it literally derailed me, and so um, just get, gaining a better understanding um, for myself, and I, and being able to share these things. But not only that, uh, Jonas, I I have to keep it. You know, I have to be one hundred with you, man. Um, for me, it was um, it was a place of faith for me. Um, I really had to connect with the creator, you know, um, and get to get back to this place uh, of prayer um, and trusting God that, hey, I realized that God has ordained this for me. Right. Um, and I, I don't want to fast forward, but I think I done jumped off into it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this one. Right. So um, get into this place of faith. And realizing and understanding for myself what was really happening, right? And and, and this this place of anxiety um, that bought this worry um, that 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 really paralyzed in in so many words paralyzed me, kept me from um, achieving the goals that I was setting for myself. But throughout the day, um, um, bringing up bringing on this abnormal. Um, an unsteady place in life where I couldn't rest. Um, I was feeling this, 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 this burden, this heavy, this heaviness on me that I couldn't shake. Um, having the headaches that that just wouldn't seem to go away, you know. And I realized in in, in my development, in my study, to better understand what was going on, I realized that anxiety, anxiety, or this worry, which translates in the Greek as uh, mere M no. I, I hope I said that right. Mere M no. Okay. M E R I M N A O. Mere M no, right? Which means anxiety, means distracted, means to be double minded, you know? So when worry comes in and, and, and begins to attack us, when anxiety comes in and begins to attack us, when fear comes in and begins to attack us, um, it comes to divide our thoughts. It comes to, to take away all the useful knowledge and worthwhile um, 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 conceptions of life. You know, everything that you believed before, um, it, it comes to strip that from you. It, it comes to strip that from you. It don't. It uh, um, it doesn't. It doesn't want you to believe in what you believe. It doesn't want you to um, to hold on to the truth that you found for yourself. Um, it comes to strip it from you. Um, it comes to to give you this doubt. It comes to uh, 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 to to give you this 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 these feelings of fear, um, causing you to be double minded, unsure, uncertain, uh, um, in your mental process. This was what I was finding. Here I was trying to do something great, um, trying to make a difference, um, um, come and get it online, sharing whatever, um, trying to share whatever it was that was in my heart to share. But then when I would get off offline, the first thing I would say was, well, ain't nobody paying no attention to it anyway. You know, that, that 
uh, nobody's listening anyway. Um, no, no, nobody's following anyway, right? So all those negative thoughts come in, the, in my mind after I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do something positive. But the, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was that I kept feeding it and I kept believing, I began to believe it. And, and that fear and that belief, uh, I'm holding on to that fear and that belief caused me to start doubting uh, where, where I was heading, where, where, thing, where, where God was leading me, where, uh, how things could uh, eventually look, right? Um, so, so things doesn't look like the way I thought they should look at this particular time and place. But I realized that oftentimes God just have to take you through some things so you can see uh, what he really has for you um, in the midst of all that you're going through, right? So uh, the worry comes to, to block your flow of creativity. It comes to block your energy. Um, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't wanna support your life. It doesn't want you to push forward. You know, Th this was what this anxiety was doing to me. Um, it was really trying to keep me from getting or gaining the place in life where God was, was coming, I mean, where God, where God was leading me to. And I began for myself, to, to hold on to the doubt, the disbelief. And so when I began to really look at this thing and understand this thing for myself, and, 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 and of course I'm coming from a, 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 a place of faith now, right? So when I, I'm looking at this thing for myself, I realized that um, this, this thing can't want it to, to be, and you know, I don't use this word, right? But it, it, it was coming to make me weak. It didn't want to limit me, you know. It didn't. It don't want to limit me. I mean, what's what, I shared this before? The difference between being weak and, ha and having limitations. See, when you're weak, uh, you you don't have the mindset to know that you have the strength to overcome something. But when you're limited and you believe that this is a limitation in life, now all of a sudden you you try to find ops, uh, uh, measures or other other methods to overcome the limitation. But when you're weak, you're not looking for, for, for other ways to overcome your weakness. You just settle into the weakness. You accept it, right? So th this worry comes to make you weak, right? And, and when you become weak, now you lose your faith, you know? You're, and, and, and now let's be real. We need faith in everything that we do in life. Now, I got it. Everybody may not be a believer. And, and, and faith is not just uh, uh, saying that, hey, uh, I, I I believe in uh, this God, or uh, I believe in the the uh, uh, or in Jesus, or whatever the case may be, or I, or I believe that God can do this for me. But some we need faith in the ability to know that wherever it is that God is taking us, or wherever whatever in our heart that's leading us to make a difference, to be that difference, we need faith to believe that we are that difference. So if anxiety and worry comes to strip you to make you weak it comes to strip your faith where now you don't even have the faith to believe in yourself mm. you believe into the you believe into the you believe the doubt um it also comes to 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 bring uh to uh to bring a form of of disobedience in life, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I don't know if that makes sense to you, but you know, we, we got two choices in life. Either we can do, we can do what's on the left hand, that whatever to come to the left, left hand to say, go do, or we can go do whatever the right hand say, go do. We make choices, whether that's good or bad, however that may look for you, we have choices, right? But when you are walking in this place of weakness and you have no faith, it's too easy to turn around and go back and do the old things you've been doing in life. It's so easy. So you, you, in essence, you walk in this place of disobedience. See, uh, anxiety when it when it when it comes when that fear comes to grip grip you and when it comes to make you weak, it comes to snatch your faith. It comes to cause you to be disobedient. Hold on, watch this to what you believe about yourself. Say that again, say it again so they can write it down because I know I am. <laughs> we, we become disobedient to what we believe about ourselves. So in essence, you work so hard to, to get to this new level in life. You work so hard to be at this place you are today. And because of the anxiety, because of the 
uh, uh, this weakness that tries to trap you and hold you and snatch away your faith, right? Now it wants you to be disobedient to the positive things in life. Mm. It, don't, it don't want you to read the book. No. It, <laughs> it, it don't want you to wake up at 4 a.m. And, and, and get and jumpstart your day in the a.m. so you can get more productivity done. Oh, so you can not only get get uh, uh, produce more, but now you can still go out like you do. You wake up every morning, 3 a.m., get your jog on, get your meditation on, uh, get your study on, prep the kids and wife, and then you go to work by 9 a.m. It don't want you to do that. It wants you to jump out of bed at 8.30, rush down the street, run into a bunch of traffic, start cussing and fussing, and acting like a donkey. <laughs> That's, it wants you to operate in this form of disobedience. You know what right. I'm saying? A, I agree. Opposed to walking in a place of obedience. You know what I'm saying? You teaching yourself and training yourself to be obedient to uh, and mindful of, uh, of my day. I got 24 hours in a day. How am I going to use those 24 hours effectively? How, what am I going to produce in my day? It don't want you to be obedient to that. It wants you to be disobedient to, to time. It don't want you to, to be mindful of time. And right. that's, that was what's happening, right? Hold on. It, it comes to bring destruction. It comes to bring destruction. Did you, I didn't know that, that anxiety and worry, worry will break your body down. Yeah, this ease right your body is no longer at ease right so when you're ang when you're anxious when you're nervous your your molecules your atoms start to shake at a different lower vibration right and that's where this ease comes from it creeps in because we are no longer our body is no longer obedient to the positive vibrations i'm sorry i had to go off on that a little bit my bad man <laughs> that's good that's good but it's true. We now, now we, we we got this disobedience, and now we got this destructive behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, this destructive behavior to the place and point that excuse me, that now um, because we're not producing everything that that's that's connected to, the, to us is failing. Everything that's connected to us is failing because we no longer produce. We, 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 we believe the lie that we're weak. We believe the, the lie that you, you aren't capable of doing it. Uh, you will never mount up to, to do anything. Uh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna go back to jail. Uh, uh, you, 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 you're never going to get it right. You, you, you never, uh, you, don't worry about your purpose. You're never going, you're never going to fulfill it, fulfill it. Don't worry about it. Um, nobody really cares about your purpose anyway. Nobody want to hear, you know, uh, uh, what you have to say or how you want to, to 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 deposit in the lives of others, man. And this thing really took me on a trip and journey, right? Um, so last week, trying to push through being productive, I started. I, um, I have been reaching out to a couple different um, um, uh, transitional uh rehabilitation centers for guys transitioning from uh tr uh from prison right and i went out to a few of these establishments man and um try to connect try to introduce myself uh you know see how i can come and support add some value to some of these guys lives how i can help some individuals man and and i went to two or two different establishments man and i literally was so i was surprised by by the lack of, uh, I don't think nobody care, bro. <laughs> I'll just be real, man. I don't think nobody care. I don't think nobody cares what others are experiencing. As long as our life is hunky dory, as long as we got everything that we want in life, we got a job, we got a roof over our head, uh, we able to pay our bills, we able to feed our family, everything else in life is fine, you know? And when, I, when you woke me up to this thing uh, about anxiety, I immediately researched. And the, thing, the one thing I wanted to know was, well, shucks, if I'm experiencing this and I'm not even, I'm not even going through the, half the things that dudes go through transitioning from, from prison back into, the, into, back into society, well, what's some things that's causing them some anxiety? Mm. You know, well, off, off your head, I'm sure you can name a couple of them. One being yeah, a... Mean, 
Yeah, when I touched down, right? Um, what year was that? 2000. Last time I was locked up was 2008, right? 2007, I get a violation um, for being around documented gang members. I was a documented gang member, being around other documented gang members on Halloween. Um, I did 10 months flat, straight, right? And so that was the last time, but the anxiety feeling always came about. There was a lot of things, right? One is, if I have nowhere else to go, how am I supposed to change, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they want me to be here rehabilitated, but I'm going right back to the neighborhood. I live right back in the middle of all this, but you're telling me, right, without any guidance, without any help, that I just have to figure it out and someone's going to pay me, go get a, uh, you know, go get a minimum wage job and in hopes find as many as I can just so I can support my, you know, whatever I need to be supported. I think a lot of guys, uh, anxiety comes from money, right? How to earn money, how not to go back to jail, you know, and maybe, and living situations, you know, there's, those are a lot of things about mine, right? I had nowhere to go. I, when I paroled in 06, I was homeless. I was literally homeless. Now, mind you, I had, my father lived in San Diego. My mother lived in San Diego. My mom's husband said, no, guess what, Jonas? He says, you can't come stay with us. My dad, he was a roommate with some other person in the house, right? I had nowhere to stay. I had to go to a homeless shelter. You know what I mean? A parolee shelter. Did that for six months. Then I had to go to a sober living home and, and lied to myself and told myself I wasn't an addict. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't take the process there, but those are some of the anxiety, right? Not knowing where to live. And those things right there, and like you said, right, you become disobedient, right, to the positive things of the, all the plans that you had while you were in there. And now here comes this self-doubt because these things are not lined up. You're not, you're not in faith that you will find it, right? And here comes the self-doubt. You're disobedient. And then you'll go back to doing the things you used to do. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, a, that's how anxiety normally works. I mean, you hit, hit it on, 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 the, on the head with that. But I think those are some of the things that being a parolee, right, from my experience, how am I going to eat? How am I going to get some clothes on my back? You know what I mean? And how am I not going to get violated? You know what I mean? And, and how I'm not going to catch a case. And if I'm gangbanging, how I'm not going to die. You know what I mean? Those are the five things. And those things can be very, very heavy weighing on you. You know what I mean? And it's a lot easier sometimes when that pressure comes like they say, pressure can bust a pipe or make a diamond. You know what I mean? A lot of times it, it, it busts a lot of pipes, you know? And so people go back and be disobedient and no longer with the faith and continue to do what they used to do, you know, without the change, right? So, I, but you know what? What I have to, here, here we go. That's what anxiety was, right? But how did I handle it? What I do? When I had to, I'll tell you this. I had to stop caring about what everyone else cared about. I had to stop worrying about what everybody else was going to think about me by getting this square job. I had to stop worrying about, right? Anxiety is worry, right? So I had to stop worrying about how much am I going to get paid and be grateful and thankful that I got a job because when I was in prison and I was going behind the wall and they stripped me asshole naked every day and I have to spread my cheeks and cough and be violated in front of other men because everyone's looking at you, right, for free. What I look like over here talking about, I'm not going to get this $7 an hour job. I know it ain't paying all my bills, but it's better than hey, anything beats a blank. You know what I mean? So I was grateful in the moment. And once I became grateful for what I had, guess what? I had that job um, blowing peanuts at the San Diego Padre Stadium for minimum wage. Within three months, a friend that I used to know um, got me another job that paid $3 more, right? So once I became grateful, once I became thankful and once I became in the moment and stopped worrying about what other people were going to think, how was I going to feel? Uh, does everything have to be laid out for me? I walked in faith in my humbleness and everything came to play. Everything came, right? But without the actionable steps of doing those things, who knows where I'd be? I'd probably be in and out, catching more violations, catching the case, who knows? But those are some actionable steps that I took. And it all starts from within. It starts with cutting out the chatter, cutting out that anxiety chatter and realizing and stop worrying and focus on self and what is, what's your next best move? Let's just keep wanting. Ask yourself, what's your next best move? We got to, you got to use perspective. You got to weigh it out on left hand, right hand, like you was talking about. You have choices. Choice is what? I can continue being in the streets, doing what I do. I might be out here for another two months, two years, 20 years, but I probably get cracked and go back. 
or I change. And, and I don't have to go strip out in front of a gang of men every day. I don't have to be away from my family. I don't have to be away from um, a woman's touch, <laughs> home cook meals. You know what I mean? Showering by myself. You know what I'm saying? Told what to do. Like you got choices and you're going to have to realize what choice is your best choice. Like, okay, like I used to always say, right, in the game, right? Let your next move be your best move. <laughs> Let your next move be your best move. And that's going to be up to you what your next move is going to be. No, that's good, brother. So, yeah, um, no, I, that's really that's really good. They say, let your next move be your best move. You know I'm writing that down, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's, I think that's, I think that's very key, right? That comes, that comes with, the, like you said, it comes with the choices. You know, and any person that's getting out the pen, out the county jail, man, if you don't like it, man, you got to change. If you don't change, you're going to, we all know the same, man. What is it? If you continue to do the same things over and over, that's the definition of insanity, right? Right? If you go outside, you play basketball, you're sweating, you're stinking like a pig, yeah, you know, you, 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 you can't just come home and hop in the bed and then wake up and thinking that you clean because you don't went to sleep and you didn't dry it off. You funky. You all the way nasty. You got to come home and shower, change your clothes, and then, you know, but that's change, right? You can't continue to do the same thing and think you're going to get a different result. It ain't going to happen. It's not. And that comes with cause and effect, comes with choices. Here's the effect. Here's the cause. We always try to change this effect right here, right? Oh, shit, if I don't play basketball, for five hours, I might not sweat as much, but I still don't got to take a shower. No, 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 no. Go to the cause. The cause is you funky. Why? Because you ain't showered, you little nasty butt. Get your butt in the shower, right? It's the same. I, I figure that's what everything lies down to is cause and effect. You don't want to go back to prison, dude? Well, you don't have to change something. What's the cause of you going back to prison? Me? I was drunk being around homies doing dumb stuff. So I stopped. You know what I mean? Simple. It's not simple. Okay, put it like this. It's not easy, but it's simple. Yeah. If you let your next move be your best move. It's very simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think too, for me, uh, it, it opened my eyes to something. I, I believe this. Often, got time. God take you through. Thank you. Take you through changes, uh, and uh, for better uh, experiences, so you can have a better uh, a better bird's eye view of what uh, what it really takes for people to change. You know, uh, prior, prior to this experience, um, I had this, I couldn't understand why it was so difficult for so many people to change or not to change, right? Um, but when, when I realized now that uh, this mental health, and, and, and hats off today is mental health. Oh, day. is it? Yes, it is. Today. I didn't even know that. Well, say that then. That's what we gonna say. Hey, it was right on point then. Uh, today is mental health day definitely right on point right but and, and understanding what, what what makes people what what makes it so difficult for people to change you know well i i, I begin to understand what makes it difficult to for people to change um depression when that, that weight or, or anxiety when that weight of life is really on you and it's so heavy um and you feel like you can't move you feel like you uh that, that you, you don't have the capacity to think. I mean, it, it, it comes to really block your thinking. It comes, yeah. it comes to hinder creativity. You can't figure out what to do or why you feel in the way you do, let alone you can't move. You literally, I mean, yeah, you, you walking around and you, you still functioning, but the truth is you're not doing what you would normally be doing. And so I think um, God took me to this, through this, this experience, um, to really open my eyes um, to 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 understand um, what the what individuals first are experiencing through the transition from 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 prison um, back to society um, because uh, as you you know my nonprofit I'm very passionate about helping individuals uh, in personal growth and leadership um, but now I have a I have a better understanding and I'm not here to say that I'm I'm some some um, some uh, mental health specialist. I am not that, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> I definitely now can can uh, can relate uh, a little bit more personally and understand when when someone tells me, "Man, it's just hard." It's or or I'm just I just feel burdened. I just it's too heavy. 
or and I just give when they just want to give up. You can mm-hmm. something on you so 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 heavy that you just want to give up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you just want to give up. Think about you, you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm over here, whoo! You know, for real. Hey, yeah, because I can feel it, right? I can feel it because I had that that what you just said hit home, right? Yeah feel like giving up. That's what you feel like doing. That's what that feeling makes you feel like, right? Excuse my language. You mind if I, can I cuss? Can I say it? Be you, man. All right, well, check it out. That's when Mr. Fuck It comes along. <laughs> Mr. Fuck It, you know, he comes along, she comes along, she says, hey, you know what? Fuck it. You don't got to do that, right? Hey, and, and man, that voice is so loud. You know, you tend, because that voice has been prevalent in your life for so long. It's a familiar voice. That voice is soothing. That voice is comforting. That voice is your reason to excuse yourself from not being who you really want to be. Mm. So Mr. Fuck It comes and slap you in the face and holds your hand and gives you a drink, gives you a blunt. It gives you that girl on a corner. You know what I mean? That man, that man in the club. It gives you all these things to pacify you away from your greatness. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 wanna, it, it don't want you to see it don't want you to see the possibility of who you are mm. or what you or, or the possibility of what you can do. Um, right. it, doesn't, it don't want you to see what that purpose looks like when it comes to fruition. It don't want you to recognize the potential, the, all, the, the God-given potential you have to do anything that you put your mind to. It don't want you to develop that. No, it don't it want don't you to let- while talking about this, right? How you said you reached out to people. I reached out too. In, in these last couple of weeks, I've been dealing with anxiety a lot as well. And um, a friend of mine, I've heard this before, but you know how it is. Like sometimes when someone else says it, 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 it hits you in the moment, like you needed it right then. And so what he said was, uh, things don't happen to you. They happen for you. Yeah. Right. So boom, that triggered a lot of other great questions. Right. So he hit that. I'm like, you know what? This is a learning lesson. So that had my brain start working, right? Then it said, then I heard someone say, um, what is it? God ain't brought me, a voice said, God ain't brought me this far to drop me off right now, right? So that hit me. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I could have died when I was in front, of the, in front of the bar and they shot that thing up. I could have died when I was drinking and driving and almost and flew off, almost flew off the bridge. You know what I mean? I could I could have died and got life in prison. But you get me through all that. I'm tripping off of this. I'm ready to quit. Like, come on now, man up, right? Then I listened to Michael Beckworth, right? I don't know if you ever watched the movie The Secret, right? And this yep. gentleman named Michael Beckworth, right? That's where I was introduced to him, right? To his work, to his teachings, to his, his purpose. And I was watching something. He has this, um, I think it's like a church, right? Called it the what is it called? Agape, right? But I was just trying to listen to some things and he asked a question and I really like this question. He said, ask yourself, what is emerging from me in this moment? What is emerging? So while I'm going through this anxiety, right? I'm like, what is trying to emerge? What am I trying to learn? God is trying to show me something so I can learn and maybe help others. What's coming? And that also got me to get grounded, right? I I, I took it off the big picture. I, t- I That stopped the worrying from the worry, the anxiety of not being fulfilled, not being here, not doing this right, not doing this correctly. You know, the views on Facebook, this, am I touching somebody? Am I bringing value? No, it brought me back to this moment. And then I think a lot of us, if we ask ourselves, what are we learning our brain? It triggers a different response in us, right? If we go into the negative, into the sorrow, and we feed into that self-doubt, right? We go down and we, it's like feeling, it's like putting logs on a fire. That flame is going to, that flame of self-doubt and anxiety is going to grow and it's going to grow and it's going to turn into a wildfire. Next thing you know, you are not going to be able to control it. And that's what seemed like it happened to us at a certain period, right? It was getting so big. We could, the little fire extinguisher, just thinking about a different thought wasn't happening no more. You know what I mean? It got big and we had to, we had to draw from a bigger experience, you know what I mean? From a bigger power. But we have to ask ourselves these, Tony Robbins says this, right? He says, if you ask a better question, you get a better answer. So I started to ask myself better questions, not why is this happening to me, but what is emerging from this? What am I to learn? And my brain and the spirit, everything started to align and I started to get some kind of guidance. You know what I mean? So in a piece of solitude, if you're able to ask yourself that question, 
maybe whenever you're able, that's a great question. What am I, what am I learning from this situation? Because it, I'm here for a reason. It's not happening to me. This is happening for me. What am I to learn? Yeah, yeah, no, that's real good. You know, that I, I, uh, I do coffee and conversation every Saturday morning, and it's really to, to get online with, it, just like we do, right, to get online with, uh, with individuals and, and just find out what did they learn from this past experience, this past week, rather, you know, because there's some pros and cons uh, in life. And there's some learning lessons that we can learn to, to either remove or adapt to life or, 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 or re abstain from. Um, and, and so we can become better individuals. So I like, I like what you said there. Um, it's true. It, it's, it asks better questions. What, what can I learn from this? What's, what's here for me to gain? What, what, what should I have taken away? And that's exactly the questions I was asking myself um, uh, during this time. Um, um, and of anxiety, de dealing with the anxiety, um, and, and, it, and it became very clear that my, my letter, my learning lesson for me was to realize that um, uh, first off, you 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 need to stand in the place of faith and trust. Keep trusting God about where where, where I'm taking you. Secondly, uh, it was to, to to help me better understand people. Um, if anything, I'm learning. Uh, during this time uh, of COVID is to better how to more effectively communicate with other people, you know, mm -hmm. um, under, understanding people and understanding uh, not so much why they think the way they think, but uh, recognizing behaviors that lead to uh, particular outcomes um, um, and, and how, how if I can understand your behavior, I can understand too how I can better uh, communicate with you, how I can uh, effectively uh, communicate with you, how, how I, can, I can identify some strengths that you may look at as limitations. You know, truth be told, let me share, let me share this real briefly. I had a buddy call me Saturday morning and we, we made a conversation and he was telling me, man, I'm not, I'm not such a great leader. I said, what do you mean you're not a great leader? And he told me all the great things he did. And then he, told, he turned around and told me, the things that he was struggling with, right? He, was, he started telling me the limitations, what he identified as weaknesses. Now, I'm not gonna go through that story again, but we understand there's just simply limitations in our life, right? And so I, uh, in, in, in conversing with him, I, had, I helped him realize that uh, what your limits are, um, you identify, that's great. It's good to know what, 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 what limitations we have, but now, at, at the being the being the leader you are, the first thing you know, um, self awareness is important. So because you know you identified your uh, your limitations, how do you overcome those limitations? How do you how do you sub 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 can't say the word substitute? Yeah, how do I substitute uh, my limitations and build upon them to be strengths? Right, and I told him it's all about how you build your team. You know, well, if you know that you are very uh, uh, dominant personality, uh, you realize that your tone, when you speak to people, your tone can be heavy or harsh. Um, you can come off rude or obnoxious. Then that means that when you're talking with other people, don't be rude or not obnoxious. Be more mindful and, and, right. and, and you know, to, to, to articulate yourself. I said, that, that's how you overcome limitations, you know? Not only that, but then you, 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 get, you get people and you find people that, uh, that, uh, that, that help you in so many words, who you get, you get around people who help, uh, help showcase your strength. That's it, that's what I'm gonna That help showcase your strength because they'll pick up where you weak at. So if you know you're not the greatest communicator and you got somebody around you who's an effective communicator, because you, you know how to approach them, guess what? You can share them what issues you may have in with another individual and they may give you some ideas or tips how to approach that situation. And now you look like this exceptional leader, you know what I'm saying? So uh, don't, don't be held down by your limitations or what you consider to be weaknesses. The truth is, um, while we all have a variance of differences, um, at, when we come together, we make a unique piece, um, and, and, and unique pieces get some get, can get some amazing things done um, in the community, you know. And so that's what I had to share with you, and, and just being able to uh, overcome limitations. 
And that comes from that, that comes from the bully. I mean, that comes from the bully of self-doubt. Uh, anxiety, anxiety is the father of self-doubt, in my opinion, right? That's what I'm gonna call it. You know what I mean? Because anxiety is gonna build up the worry, it's gonna build up the self-doubt, and we all do it. And I was just asking my buddy a similar question. Why is why do we why do we a lot of times allow that self-doubt to be so prevalent in our ear, right? Like you said, he said he named so many great things, and then in the same breath was like, I'm not a great leader. <laughs> like my buddy's like, I'm about, I might get some money, but I don't know if I want to go this route. And I'm and he's like, because if I get the money, he went down a spiral of all the bad things that might happen when he get this money. And I'm like, why do we do these things? And that's, you know, that comes from that self doubt. That comes from training our mind and not being faithful in doing the positive and next best move with these things that are coming in our life. You know what I mean? Um, so we just gotta be we gotta be aware. But it's always good to have people around us. That's I think in this. If another another cliff note, people, someone want to write down, talk to somebody. Because when you get away from the TV screen, right, of your life, right, someone's going to have a better view behind you and might be able to give you a few tips. You might be missing what's going on in the corner right there. You might be missing what's going on in the corner because you're so close. You like this. Look at my face. I can't see nothing around. But if I draw the person behind, get to see the whole thing and give me some insight, some clarity, you're just going to have to sit there and have faith, have belief. And, and know that the person you're talking to has your best interest at heart, listen and apply. We're going to, we're going to take the Coach Val approach. Listen, the LA approach. Listen like and apply. Yeah, listen yeah. and apply it. That's good. That's good. LA approach. And yeah, you're right. Um, um, being able to have that, um, to, to, to talk with someone and share with someone and get that, that other perspective. You know, uh, um, you, hit, you hit on some great things, some great points on how to handle uh, anxiety. Uh, first, what was it? Let me see what you got. Stop, first, stop caring about what everybody else think. You know, um, fi find a place of gratitude and be thankful. You know, maintain and hold on to your faith. Um, then, then you said, uh, uh, find some, find somebody you can talk to. I, let me say this to you. I really appreciate you because uh, those those past few weeks uh, uh, when we had been talking you really helped me out, man. You really helped me out. Um, you, you was able to, to just listen, then offer, offer, offer some, uh, some, uh, some alternative ways how to approach the situation. And they all help. They all help, you know. Um, you even give, giving your input and, and opening my eyes to, to anxiety and, and mental health, you know. Uh, all those things really help. So, um, being able to talk to having having a I like to say have an accountability per, partner that's going who's going to be able to inspire you who's going to be able to motivate you who's going to give you some sound words of wisdom um, somebody you can trust you know not, you don't want to share somebody you, you go sharing somebody the hardship you have and they go and telling everybody down the street you right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying no um, you it's, it's you got enough hard enough time dealing with it and I, and what I find is many people don't express this stuff. Many people don't, especially men. Men, men they're not, they not talking about uh, uh, how heavy they really feel, you know, or, or how, they, how they feel like they might be fail, failing or failures in life because they, they're not at the place in life they want to be. Um, they're not going to tell you how they're really struggling with uh, um, on their jobs or in their marriages or just within themselves. You know, guys ain't gonna talk about that. So being able to have a, a, a true accountability partner, and I got to say this to you, man, I got to take my hat off to you, Kat. That's how I see you, man. I see you as a true accountability partner, man. So- uh, Likewise, man, likewise. I really appreciate you um, having that accountability partner. But I think more so being able to just talk freely, transparently, honestly, um, um, really helps remove uh that stressor and opens your mind and i'm gonna and, and i'm gonna i'm gonna give you this too because this i think these are the absolute keys to your success you got to get to the place of of uh holding tangible to your faith the god in your life identify the true essence of who god is um and holding him to his word that hey first off he said i love you and i love you so much that i sent my only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him 
should not uh, perish, but have eternal life. Get to that place of faith and belief. Trust God that his word that he said to you also that, that I know the plans that I had for, have for you to prosper you, not to, not to harm you, but to prosper you. You know what I'm saying? That get to that place of holding God's hand that, that he's giving you a vision, that he's giving you a dream um, um, to, to, to derive to uh, his God-given purpose and to draw from you the richness of your potential, all for the benefit of not just you, but everybody that you come in contact with. You know, so hold, hold, hold strong to your faith. And, and, and I know everybody's not a believer and everybody can believe whatever they want. But I'm here to tell you um, that there's a God. There's a God that loves you. There's a God that cares for you. Um, and, and who wants to be in communion and relationship with you? And I, that's what I found for myself was that that um, that element of relief was uh, really getting back to this place of um, holding on true to my faith, uh, praying, seeking God's face and uh, to help me overcome that pressure, that doubt um, and and hold on to the dream, the vision and purpose that I know he has for me um, um, to complete. Mm. That's that's. I agree, man. You said it eloquently, man. You got to, though. You got to. And um, I know I did. And when I did, and I was able to understand that, well, how does, what does it say in the Bible? Lean not on your own understanding, mm -hmm. you know? And I was able to not lean on my own understanding and know that there was something, you know, God has a plan and a purpose for me. You know what I mean? I've seen a lot of friends die, go to jail forever. You know what I mean? Uh, people's strung out on, on drugs, you know what I mean? Homeless. You gotta, you gotta believe in something. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like that. You got to believe in something. And uh, Amen. That's, that's real. Jay, again, man, I really appreciate you. Our time has elapsed, brother. We got three minutes and I want to be respectful of your time. I want to say thank you to you, Kat. Uh, let's tell your wife, kiss your wife for me on the cheek. Let her <laughs> 60 minutes or so, man, and the family, man. I really want to just say thank you to you, Kat. Um, hey, uh, close us out, man, with uh, about what you do and how people can reach you if they choose to. Um, you know, I'm just here to spread a little bit of light, get us about the way and change, man. You know, so you can look me up on Facebook, Jonas Royster, um, Jonas Royster on Instagram, Jonas Royster on YouTube. Find me in all the little places. Just here to shed some light, man, and, and talk for those of us who who feel like we ain't we ain't never had no voice. You know what I'm saying? So, believe me, we here together. If we can't talk to each other, then who are we gonna talk to? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we here for. D, we here to talk to them. We here to talk to each other for us men and, and us women. And let's keep it 100. It's for everybody. But I'm gonna tell you, for for the ones that look like us and been through the things, that's what I'm talking to. I'm gonna keep it 100. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when you when you down and out. Sometimes you need that person that look like you know them been through that. I know we only got a couple minutes, so I'm gonna shut up. But follow me there, man. You get some more game. We get we'll be have enter, you know, some dialogue. That's what's up. Well, listen, don't don't miss my man Jonas Royster on foot, Facebook at Hoods Proverbs. Um, he they they put some great content out there to motivate you and inspire you and keep you moving forward in life. Also, you can follow me, uh, Men of Vision Colorado, on uh, Facebook Live. Find me on Instagram and also. You can find more videos at YouTube, uh, so be sure to subscribe. I just want to close out and say thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Homeboy, God bless you, man. Enjoy the weekend. God bless.